You know, when the Eagles first came to major prominence in the 1970s, a lot of bands <coughs> and a lot of splinter bands from the Eagles tried to rip off what Henley and Fry and Joe Walsh and Timothy B. Schmidt and all the key members did. But this song, when it came out, it was so uh, so much kind of a, like an Eagle style that we thought it was Eagles grow, uh, growing up in northern New Brunswick. We found out it was by this uh, kind of uh, what do you call schmaltzy uh, middle of the road singer called Christopher Cross and he won numerous Grammys for this first album where the song appeared but he got of all people Michael McDonald from the Doobie Brothers to uh, do backing vocals and of course the uh, the parody of the song on SCTV by Rick Moranis is probably one of the best musical skits in the variety show history so today we're going to be talking about the history of Ride Like the Wind if you've never heard it before, please uh, do so on YouTube. You're going to see a little bit of Bob Seger, a little bit of Eagles, a little bit of that kind of California, uh, Detroit rock. Now, Ride While I Like to Win is the debut single by Christopher Cross. It was released in February 1980 as the lead single from his Grammy-winning 1979 self-titled debut album. It reached number two on the U.S. charts for four weeks behind Call Me by Blondie. On the album's inner sleeve, Christopher Cross dedicated a song to Lowell George, formerly of the band Little Feet, who had died in 79. It features backing vocals by Michael McDonald and a solid guitar solo by Cross. Now, 432 for the album version and 356 for the single uh, version. This was uh, the big hit, of course, uh, in uh, Sailing Followed, which was, again, Crosby, Stills and Ash and Young uh, ripoff. But still, you know, you want to rip off the best. Now, this was the first song recorded for Cross's... Uh, uh, first official album was tracked by Cross's band of Tommy Taylor on drums, Andy Solomon on bass, and Rob Moore, and Mon Moore on synthesizers. <coughs> After a first day of recording, Cross's producer uh, Michael O'Martin Martien noticed that the band had struggled being accustomed to the studio. They were great musicians, but a bit nervous. During these recording sessions, someone recommended that Taylor play a four-on-the-floor beat so that the kick drum was playing at every beat. Omartier commented that his drum pattern made the thing hop from the beginning. After two to three days of tracking, the band produced a satisfactory take. Cross had originally wanted a session guitarist to play the solo, but Omartier insisted that Cross uh, play it itself. For the vocals, Omartier used an AKG 414. Cross did four to five vocal takes, all of which possessed similar in the intonation. Chris's pitch was ridiculous and he was very stylized. So you went from one thing to another, he was exactly the same. If there was an impulse to do something like a scat or some, some kind of riff, he had thought about it so every single track possessed the same riff. On the original demo, the response vocals were also sung by Cross, although uh, Mathieu suggested using a different vocal and ultimately settled on Michael McDonald. Now Cross wanted uh, Mathieu to play in the record, so the later over overdubbed the acoustic piano with Fender Rhodes electric piano to fulfill his request. Soon after these parts were recorded, Lenny Castro came to the studio to play congas, while Victor Feldman recorded the additional percussion. A horn and 28-piece string section led by violinist Astor Drawer was recorded. To finish Ride Like the Wind, Cross and engineer Chet Heim decided to start the song with wind sound effects. It could have ended up being dopey, but we didn't push the volume up on the sound effect to make a takeover of what was going on. Or Mathieu recalled using a Harrison 48-channel board and two Ampex 1,224 track machines to record the instruments and uh, vocals. Now, the lyrics of the song tell the story of a condemned criminal on the run to Mexico. Told from a first-person point of view, it describes how an outlaw and convicted, uh, how an outlaw and convicted multiple murderer on the run from a death by hanging sentence has to ride like the wind to reach the border of Mexico. Now, Cross was high on LSD when he wrote the lyrics. We were living in Houston at the time and on the way down to Austin to record the songs. It was a beautiful, beautiful Texas day. I took acid, so I wrote the words on the way down from Houston to Austin. In 99, the satirical uh, newspaper The Onion published a story with a headline, Christopher Cross finally reaches Mexican border. The headline was a reference to the song and the tree set in story. Made several specific allusions to her lyrics. Cross appreciated the honor. And again, on the weekly charts, it was 25 in Australia. Uh, top three in Canada, 31 in New Zealand, 69 in the UK, uh, 10 in the Billboard. <clears throat> uh, 
Number two in the U.S. Uh, Billboard Hot 100, 69 in the U.K., and 24th on the U.S. Adult Contemporary on uh, Charts. Year End Charts was top 21 in Canada and top 17 in the States. Now, uh, the, re- the, the Ride Like the Wind song itself is a song of its time. It kind of singled the end of the 1970s, but the bridge to the, the 1980s. There's been several uh, versions uh, through the years from different artists, including uh, the Italian dance music group Eastside uh, Beat. Uh, there's also, uh, which actually did very well on the international charts, not as well in the U.S., obviously. There's a Lawrence Wary version uh, that uh, charted in Belgium. There's a Saxon version uh, under 88 uh, album Destiny. There's a Jan Landy version where a music video for it was released in 2010. So why is this one of the most important kind of what they call not easy listening versions, but pop, uh, soft pop, uh, you don't hear that very often, by the way, soft pop, pop songs of its era. Well, uh, there's aspects of country, and uh, the Eagles, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like Amy Lou Harris would do a slower version, but uh, having Michael McDonald, see, Michael McDonald only really became bigger than he was. He was known to be in the Doobie Brothers, but he was kind of... Uh, Dabbling in, in solo and duet work, uh, I think uh, was it uh, Patti LaBelle and different people. Like he uh, he was doing solo work, and uh, you look at uh, soundtrack work like Sweet Freedom, the Billy Crystal uh, movie. But Michael McDonald legitimized Christopher Cross. Now here's the deal: a one-year wonder. I think he won all the major awards at the at the Grammys. Uh, also, best new artist. He was nominated next year, of course, for the Arthur theme, but he went to Triaco. But a lot of people that uh, that first heard that song, okay, he thought it was the Eagles that wrote it because there's aspect. Uh, it seems like a drug song or a drinking song. Basically, the person is is in crisis. There's a either crisis of criminality or a crisis of emotion. But uh, uh, cr- like I said, cr- Cross reinvented soft rock. What the Carpenters were to soft rock in the early seventies. He was just as big, and it would fit all formats. You could play it in pop, rock, uh, adult, contemporary, even. Uh, I've uh, I've heard uh, different people play this on country uh, stations throughout the years. But Christopher Cross, a very, very talented guy, but like I said, uh, a one-hit wonder. And this, not, not, no criticism, it is a heavily produced song, and like you can tell, they were kind of trying to push his artists. But I don't think Christopher Cross was doing interviews. So oh, when you came up with the idea with a song on John Davidson show or Johnny Carson, well, it was on drugs. And I imagine this whole thing of me being mean Chase as a murderer going to Mexico. I know Ting ladies and gentlemen, if you, this is the first time you ever heard that, yes, Christopher Cross was on drugs when he wrote this song. If you can believe that. This is this is like ABBA doing, uh, d- doing Waterloo to lines of cocaine. Uh, that's where you get the motivation. Pretty freaky. So if you're a Christopher Cross fan, this is for you. A lot of people don't even know who the guy is. A lot of people hear the song, they think it's a Michael McDonald song. It's not. It's Christopher Cross and Michael McDonald. So that's a story and a short story, Ride Like the Wind. If you like the song or the vintage musical podcast reviews we're doing here, let us know what a like, comment, subscribe, or share.